Right, I'm back in Ridland in North Wales today and I'm going to be doing the estuary walk again but this time I'm after geocaches potential 14 uh, to be had today but I don't think I'm going to get them all because there's a few which are in muggle hotspots um, and I think if you're on your own and you know someone sees you rooting in the undergrowth or whatever I think it looks more suspicious than if there's say two or three of you so if it's a hot spot if the GZ's in a hot spot then I'm not going to bother with them and also last time I was here there was in some of the GZ's there was work going on you know there's vans and workmen there so I just I'll just bypass them uh, the uh, well GPS that I'm going to use today I have got a Magellan Explorist see that there this is a dedicated geocaching GPS excellent unit but the one I'm going to use today is my old favorite the Garmin Dakota 20 excellent GPS accurate to within inches um, so that's what I'm going to use today uh, right as I say I've got my uh, 14 GZ's locked into my GPS unit I'm doing the intro in the car because it's a bit breezy today. So, that's it. Like I say, it's the uh, estuary walk. I'm going to walk all the way from Ridland, where I am today, into Rill, over the Vorid Bridge, and then back round. It's like a, a loop today. On the other side of the estuary, I'll be returning because there's three, uh, one, two, is it three or four on the other side? of the estuary there so like I said I um, don't know how many I'm going to get today but it's a day out you know geocaching it's great fun it's a bonus when you get find the caches obviously but if you draw a blank or whatever like I've got 14 to be after today but I'm not gonna I don't think I'll get them all uh, because of the hot spots but it's uh, get you out and about get you on the walks great fun. So enough of my waffling, um, let's get going. Well the uh, first ge uh, geocache is in that self storage yard as you can see. There's bloody muggles all over the place here. So giving that one a miss. Uh, there's a van parked outside, there's bloody cars everywhere, there's people walking, dogs. It's not, it's not going to be a very good uh, geocaching day today I don't think. Anyway, on to the next one. Bloody muggles everywhere. Right, uh, that next cache was just by the style there, by that car, but you can see the static caravans there. There's people in them watching me, so just give it a miss. I did say at the beginning uh, the first few caches were in hot spots, so I'm just giving them a miss now. But I am now heading out in open country, so uh, next cache I'm gonna have a, be able to have a decent search for it. So let's just get it onto the uh, GPS. See what the situation is. Find a cache. Should be that one there. Just check. Go. And I always put it onto compass. Right, I got oh 139 feet. And counting down. And I'm on course. And there's no one about. There's only sheep. So Chances are, I'm going to get a cash. Getting close now. That bleep is telling me that I am getting close to the to the cash. So, hang on. And that arrow there on the compass is pointing towards the cash. So you can see it's, it's pointing towards here. It's this uh, gate. So let's have a look. Twelve feet. 
986543 so whoops and there it is nice easy to find this one just a bit see there that's the geocache nice easy find that one just stop the navigation on this if you can hear me the bloody wind is breezy So I just stopped that navigation and first one in the bag. Just get over this style. Well, this is it actually. Bit of a strange room. Trying to open it with the and there it is, the log books will be in them little things there, you just screw the tops there. And that'll be the where the log book is. So that's the first one in the bag. Get that signed and on to the next one. Nice one. Well, it's the first one in the bag. Uh on to the next one now. These caches are pretty close together too, they're only a few hundred feet apart. So, see if I can get another one. The only muggles I've got is the sheep, so I don't mind them. There's another cache in the bag, unusual one again, it's like a hammer, something like that. And the log block will be either in there or in there, so another one in the bag. And there's the next cache. Pretty well covered. Anyway, I'll open that up. Put that down there. Another unusual one. Zoom the log box in there. Yeah, there it is. Log book will be inside, inside that. As you can see it there. And there it is, that's what I sign, and then I put it back. Right, on to the next one now. And in the distance there, that sheep would piss off out of the way, there's the Vorid Bridge. So I'm heading for, I'll be crossing that and I'll be returning on the other side of the estuary. And you can see they're walking there, that's the way I'll be coming back. But anyway, on to my next cache and I am 340 feet away and counting down. And I'm on course. So, hopefully, another cache in the bag. I'm on a roll now. <laughs> Muggle free, that's why. Apart from the sheep. Well, well, considering the size of this one, it took me a couple of minutes to find it. But anyway, send it another one in the bag. Same to you. Right, is uh, looking towards rail. It's the Sky Tower, no longer in use. Needs about 400 grand, I think, spending on it. That's the uh, Vorid Bridge, where I'll be making my way across and then back round. And I think I've just got three. Well, heading towards me, but I've got a bit to go on this one. I've just got three, I think, on this side. Three more caches to find. And there's a muggle alert ahead, so, like I say, I've got a tenth of a mile, so I'll just stall for a bit. Sure,
Actually, I've just got 300 feet, so I'll pretend to uh, stall, I think. It's going to be there, I think, amongst that, them gates and things there, so I'll have to stall this one. In geocaching, is what's termed as a muggle, which means a non-geocacher. Just wait till he uh, gets a bit further away. He's right on GZ at the moment, uh, well, not right on it, about 20 feet away. He's not looking around anyway, so let's go for it. Right, this is GZ, so search is on. Right, this one took me a couple of minutes, but got it eventually. Well, it's fine in the bag. And we've got another muggle alert for the next one, only about 500 feet away, so. I don't know what the hell he's doing. But anyway, he's looking over at me now, so I have to give this one a miss then. Well, there's ground zero. And he seems to be uh, clearing away, so I'll just pretend to admire the views or whatever. I don't know what the hell he was doing. He was wandering around with that. There's like a pole thing he's got. He's wandering around the field with it and he stood back, he was taking photos of it. So, what the hell he was doing? I think he's doing a selfie now. <laughs> anyway, I'll hang off, hang on the best seat, he buggers off. So I'm right by ground zero now. Just check it on the uh, GPS. He does seem to be buggering off. Oh shit, I've switched it off. I'll switch it back on to see how far I am away, actually away from it. Just check I'm on the right one. Yeah, number nine. Go. Sticker on compass, you can see I'm only 38 feet away. The battery's telling me it's low as well, so anyway, he's buggered off. So let's go for this cache. Right, so we're not far off. Come out, come out, whenever you are. There it is. Ah, nice quick find that one. Let me get it open one handed. See what's inside this one. What the heck? 
fox with the pair of binoculars. Different. Anyway, there's another one in the bag. Nice easy find that one too. Alright, that last cache, the fox with the binoculars, there was not a logbook in it. But I found it and I got proof of, you know, I can even uh, put a, a still photo on the cache site. But when I get back and I log my um, reports on the geocaching site to say that I found the caches and whatever, I'll put a, a maintenance note for the logo, uh, for the cache owner. I'll let them know that the logbook's missing. And I got one to go now on this side of the estuary, and then I can make a direct route towards the Vorid Bridge, which I am getting nearer. And then I got four, I think it's four, then the other side on my way back to Ridland. Got another four geocaches to find. So, anyway, hopefully, I'll bag last cache on this side of the estuary. There it is. I found this one within seconds. A very easy find that one. So that's the last one on this side of the estuary. Right that's it for this side of the estuary with regards to geocaches. Just got to make my way straight towards the Vorid now over the Vorid and around the other side. The Vorid Bridge there, which I'm uh, heading direct for now. And my next cache is going to be there. So here's a muggle there, just saw well, two muggles just going past. But that's my next cache site. So, let's get going. Started off very windy on the walk, that's why I did the intro in the car, but it's not too bad at the moment. It's not cold, it's not raining, just a slight breeze now, so not as bad as what I thought it was going to be. So, so far, let me just have a there's all, all my caches I was after today, 14. The first three, I had to give them a miss because it's muggle hotspots. And I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven caches. And I got another four to go. And like I say, that's on the other side of the uh, estuary there. So, not done too bad today. You know, with this geocaching lark, some of them, those caches that I've found have been one or two, took me a minute or two to find, but some can be right evil. Very hard to find and, you know, eventually you, you just can't find them. You have to give them a miss, but that's what it's all about. That's what geocaching's all about. They're always there for you for the next day. Not a bad day for a walk today and a good geocaching walk, I should say. Anyway, I'll speak to you next, probably when I reach the Vorid Bridge. Tide's well out today too. You can just about make out a bit of it there, but when it's in, it comes up to here, comes up to this bank here. Anyway. Keep going. There's the Vorid Bridge.
And there's Rudland Castle, that's where I started. And that's where I'm heading back to now, on the other side. Well, I'm on the other side of the estuary now, and I'm after the next cache. But I've just overtook a pile of muggles and heading this way as well. Uh, there's about half a dozen of them, so I'll see if I can get this cache. Uh, 60 feet away, 60 something. That's telling me I'm arriving at GZ. Right. Well, I've had a quick look, just about a few seconds to see a gang of muggles coming behind me. Uh, I'm going to give this one a miss. There's always another day for it. I'm well in sight of that pile of muggles, so anyway, on to the next one. Hopefully these are not going all the way to Rudland. I think they're going to turn around anyway. I'll grab that cache another day. That's what it's like in geocaching. Out of the fun. This uh, side of the estuary, this path is a lot busier than the path on the other side. It's bloody walkers all over the place. Well, I know it is Saturday, but it's walkers and bike riders have just passed now. Uh, that last cache, I did say I had to come back to that the day, it's quieter. The next cache, I'm about a third of a mile away, so hopefully it'll be muggle free. I doubt it though, I've still got them half a dozen following behind me but I've made it away, I've put a bit of speed on and they're quite a distance away, I just see some more in the distance I think, the same way I am anyway. So it looks like it, so hopefully I can get the next cash. Anyway, it's all part of the fun. Well, there's the cache out in the open too. I suppose these rocks were supposed to be on it. But you can see it's a pretty big one, this one. Knackered too. I suppose that log book's soaking. What else is inside it? Yeah. Should be able to just about sign something. Oh, that's the log book there. Anyway, I managed to find this one within seconds. Uh, when I put it back, I'll put these stones back on it. Right, I've signed the logbook and I've put some these little rocks on it. should hold it in place, but when I uh, log my visit for this one, I'll put down that it needs maintenance. The logbook was soaking, the, the lid doesn't fit properly. So I'll report that to the owner and hopefully they'll come out and either replace the cache or sort it out, you know, put in a fresh log book in a sealed container or whatever. Anyway, I've got two more to go now, but I think there's bloody Muggle Central down that way. Anyway, we'll see. It's all part of the fun. Probably see in the distance there, another, yet another Muggle. Uh, oh. So I had to, had to abandon another one. Uh, bloody windy and all too. It's picked up now. So one left. One geocache. Hopefully I'll get it. But you never know. Anyway, pretty near to the uh, flyover now. 
at the Rutland Castle. So, let's see if I can get this last one. Well, the last geocache has stumped me. Can't find it. Had a pretty good route for a few minutes. But there's a muggle coming walking his dog, so give up on that. So that's another one for another day. Anyway, it's just coming under the uh, flyover now. So all in all, it's been a pretty decent geocaching day. Out of 14, I managed to find eight three that I didn't even search for because of muggle hotspots and one I just had a search but just couldn't find it. So anyway, thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again.